I don't think anybody's mounting antennas quite like this, especially not on a GTI. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott and I'm going to do something a little unusual. As if what I have going on here is not already unusual enough. I, I think you know that I already have plenty of vertical antennas on the car, but I'm working on a new tower solution for my Yagi's. You can see some of it in the background behind me. It's almost ready to go. It's going to Hamcation. So if you're going to Hamcation, you'll get to be among the first to see it in person, other than the thousands of people who will see it on the interstate as I drive it down there. But this new solution is gonna bring everything down about 18 inches. And once I do that, the Yagi's, as I move them around, they can and will collide with some of the verticals that I have on the roof. So at least during contests, I need the option to relocate those antennas down to a lower spot. And that is where I have decided to go with some hood mounts. There are some other contesters who do this. They, they're the kind of the ones that have inspired me and I'll, I'll share some pictures here. I think I can get permission from them to share their photos. I'm gonna put these things on my car and probably not make it be a permanent solution, but they'll at least be there as options for me to use. Should I, well, whether I've got the Yagi's up there or if I decide to put my cargo box on the car, it will give me the option to relocate antennas down to a lower position away from the roof. The obvious choice for doing this would be a lip mount, but I don't like lip mounts. I've got a paint protective film over the entire hood and a lip mount I think would damage that because of the way, the, the pressure that it would put in it. A lot of pickup trucks and SUVs have available to them this, I forget what it's called. I'm gonna call it a fender mount. I'm not sure how they're marketed, but it's not really on the fender on the outside where you can see it like you're what you're thinking but what they do is they clip onto the fender under the hood and then the bracket comes out and goes over the fender and that's where the nmo typically it's an nmo mount will go those are custom made and i well i kind of don't like those either but what i do have this is the part where gosh overlanders pay attention to this check these out these are called these are ditch light brackets and now this obviously is custom made and overlanders you you've seen these things these are definitely available for pickup trucks suvs and some off-road capable crossover utility vehicles i'm thinking like the cross track i know they're available for that but this one volkswagen has in its uh well it's a retired car now it doesn't exist anymore but the golf all track is an all wheel drive car and Volkswagen, well, we're not really old Volkswagen, but Forge Motorsports and perhaps some other outlets have been marketing and creating off-road light stuff for these Volkswagens, be it the Atlas, the Alltrack and the Tiguan. There's a pretty big market for the Touareg and the uh, Porsche Cayenne, but I'm getting off topic here. These ditch lights, what they're for is they sit at the corners of the hood at the back. And what they do is they bring light up to eye level or down to eye level, depending on your perspective. And they point outward and away from the front of the vehicle so that you can see things off to the side, uh, particularly the ditches. So I think that's why they call them ditch lights. I bought these brackets because when I first put the tower on the car, I was experimenting with, not with lighting, but with using uh, putting an eye here so that I can then run a stabilizing uh, cord up to the tower. And it was short-lived. I tried it out and uh, it's like, all right, it does this, but it's not really doing that much good. So I, I took them off. Now these come standard with a quarter inch mounting hole for a light. And I'd imagine some of the larger lights do come with a three eighths inch mounting bolt i don't know i went ahead and i drilled this out to fit a 3 8 inch hole so now i can put an nmo mount here an nmo mount scott requires a three quarter inch hole well there are some kits available that will work with a 3 8 inch hole so here's that one and so all i have to do i'll just do this right here on camera because i'm about to go outside and put these things on so the only thing i really had to do was these NMO mounts, they come with these gigantic washers, which I guess they're okay for 
if you're going to mount it on a surface that actually has more than an inch of squ a square inch of mounting surface but this is less than a square inch I mean I can get it on there sure but it'll also hang off at once it's centered over the hole so what I have instead is some 3 8 inch star washers so I'm gonna throw the 3 8 inch star washer on there add the NMO and then put on the outer sleeve. Now what I will probably do is route it like this. And then of course I'm gonna tighten that down with a crescent wrench and then route the cable to inside the car and I'll be in business. So that'll give me a pretty clean mount. So that's gonna position the antenna right where I would probably opt to put a lip mount anyway, but it won't be on the paint. And best yet is I already have bonding straps mounted in the car to bond my hood to the body of the car. And so these brackets will be bonded to the body of the car. I think they will be pretty solid. For cable routing, I, I went ahead and routed everything over to the passenger side. With as many feed lines as I have running around the car, it's almost impossible to hide them, but I at least want them indoors that don't get opened quite as frequently. My goal is to have the driver's side antenna be for 50 megahertz. So when I take down the ATAS, which is what I use for 50 megs vertically polarized during a contest, well, now I have a new place for that over here on the driver's side. And then the passenger side will be for 223.5 megahertz. It gives me options during a contest. As far as RF safety goes, you might be surprised to learn that these mounts are both more than four feet, 48 inches away from me as the driver. Both of those are outside of the hazard zone, if you will. And realistically, during a contest, all the contacts are short enough to where I'm not really gonna sit here for five minutes just blasting RF at me. So it's, uh, I, it's a risk I'm willing to accept because I know how I'm using the radios. Yes, uh, I suppose if you need your ditch lights, it, you won't want to use your ditch light brackets to mount antennas, but I suppose you could also get a, a, a small uh, bar to put on there. That way you can have both the ditch lights and the antenna. I don't know if that's practical for you or not. I don't know, tell me what you think of all of this. The hood will open and close properly and when I don't have an antenna mounted, I can just slap a cap on there and sure it'll be there and it won't be necessarily as pretty and, and stock looking as it had been in the past, but now I have options for when I have rooftop cargo, be it a tower or a cargo box or even my basket, because when my basket's up there, I can't put any vertical antennas on the roof. I mean, even the even the one that's on the roof uh, doesn't really work so well because of the clearance. It'll detune it. So I don't know. This is my solution. I'm going to run with this for a while. Let me know what you think. As always, I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Take care.